So is there a limit to the maximum number of connection your backend can handle? This is what we're gonna attempt to answer in this video. Stay tuned. Guys, what's going on? My name is Hussein, and this is the long form content that we just sit down and discuss uh, interesting questions that I get asked on Twitter. So this is one of them. Is there a limit to the number of connections on the backend? And theoretically, you should say, yes, of course, there is a limit, but when did this limit get hit? That's what we try to get an answer. So let's assume we have a client here and we have a load balancer or reverse proxy and we have a backend that eventually kind of the kitchen sink of all the requests goes to, okay? So between the load balancer listening on port, let's say 80 for simplicity, and then the client, there is technically a low limit. As long as you have memory, as long as you have RAM, as long as you have powerful CPU to handle, you can have as many as, as you can. So why is that? We're listening on port 80 and the destination IP address is fixed, right? That's the load balancer, that's the reverse proxy. So these are these two, two things is fixed. So we have the destination IP address is fixed and the destination port is fixed. What the variable that we have in the TCP packet or the IP packet, which both layer three and layer four, the uh, the port and the IP, or the source IP address and the port, the source port is what changes here. So that is as many possible IP addresses you can have times really the number of maximum number of ports, that's 65,000. That's just a huge number that you don't have to worry about. So from the front end, you can handle as many connections as you can, as long as your memory footprint is high, right? Now, let's take one example here where we have one client, not many clients, right? Just one client, one IP address connecting to this reverse proxy, right? And establishing a lot of connection. How many connections can we establish? Now, we know that the destination IP address is fixed. We know that the destination port is fixed. We know that the source IP address is fixed. Now we are left with 65,000, give or take, obviously, removing the system reserve ports and all or, or whatnot. So that's that's just one example here. So that, now you get the idea, right? Now let's go to the back end, which is a little bit, a little bit of a different story here. On the back end, the source IP address and the destination is kind of fixed. Let's, for simplicity, let's say you have one backend and one reverse proxy here. So now the reverse proxy is the client making a request to the backend, which is the destination. So the destination has a fixed IP address and has a fixed port. And it also, the source is always the reverse proxy. It's not going to change. So we have technically one client making all these requests on behalf of thousands and thousands and thousands of front-end clients, right? You got to be careful of that. So now you have only to a specific backend from this reverse proxy, you can only establish 65,000 TCP connections, after which you're going to obviously blow up. You, you cannot go more than that. There is a limit in the port number. This is 16-bit only. You cannot go beyond that, right? However, you almost never will hit this limit because guess what? You're not gonna have one backend. You're gonna load balance this stuff, right? So you're gonna have other backends. This have, you have 65,000 connections to this backend, 65,000 connections to this backend. And, and the more backend you add, the, dub, the just doubles up the uh, number of uh, connections that you can make, all right? Now I'm saying TCP connections very nonchalant, but you gotta be careful that this is not how stuff works. We are so efficient on the back end. We never use one TCP connection for the client, except for tunneling cases. But so the other trick is we do actually pooling. So when you make a request as a front end client to this reverse proxy, the reverse proxy will turn around and use one connection temporarily, it depends on the protocol, let's say HTTP one for simplicity, and it sends your request to the back end using HTTP one. Right. So for that moment, that TCP connection is 
in use for you. And you might say, Hussein, can't we just send multiple TCP, uh, multiple requests in the same TCP connection? Bad idea. We tried that. We failed with HTTP 1.1, pipelining and all that stuff. We don't do it. Basically, we stopped doing that stuff. We, we replaced it with HTTP 2 stream, uh, uh, HTTP 2 multiplexing and streaming, right? So we can, the moment I send that request on that TCP connection to the back end, the back end will receive it, process that. If an, while this is processing, if another request came into the reverse proxy, it's not going to use that connection. It's going to use another one because it's being used, right? And so it's going to use another one. So, but however, once you respond from the back end, that connection is free to do other stuff as well. So now you can reuse the connection. So there is connection reusability. So you can have a hundred TCP connection that is serving theoretically thousands and thousands of front-end clients without any problem. Yeah, and you can put limits as, okay, I have I have 100 TCP connection. I'm going to put some sort of a blocking, uh, synchronous blocking on the reverse proxy. That's okay, let's wait. Let's wait for you. Okay, well, there's all of these connections are busy if you get to that point, right? So there's a lot of stuff. Another trick you can do to get around the number of maximum connections is uh, using a different network interfaces altogether. So you can uh, listen on a specific NIC network in uh, network interface controller, I think that's what it stands for, uh, IP address, and then you can listen to another I, uh, network interface. You can have multiple network interfaces, and that, that will just basically create, if you have a unique, you, you're going to have a different IP address. As a result, you're going to have a, a beautiful set of 65,000, another 65,000 connection pair back in, right? So there's so much stuff. So you don't have to worry about running out of TCP connection and time. So, but you shouldn't really worry about that unless, unless you have a stateful load. Things like tunneling protocols, things like WebSockets, things like gRPC, right? If gRPC... If your proxy is doing a layer four tunneling for gRPC or or layer four tunneling for for uh, web sockets, right? Or layer four tunneling for MySQL Postgres connection, right? It's just literally a dumb tunnel. So that in that case, the client is literally tethered to one connection, and you cannot use that connection for anything else. So that's wasteful, right? So that's when you have tunneling going on, we have web sockets, you have to worry about that number because it will go up really fast, right? Because you cannot use that connection for anything else. So that, that's, that's the state of the uh, art as it stands today on the back end. A lot of people, uh, a lot of smart proxies started doing tricks on the back end to, to become a little bit more um, efficient on the back end, right? Because now the... Uh, the more the number of t the more TCP connections you have, the more work you have. It's, it's not like free. You have a sixty-five thousand connection. That's work on the kernel that it has to do, right? So, so Envoy, for example, uses HTTP two on the back end, supposedly that the back end supports HTTP two to multiplex request even HTTP one request that's coming from the client to the reverse proxy into an HTTP stream. So it's one TCP connection, but multiple streams. So you can use, you can you can essentially send a request on one stream, right? If someone else came in with another request, doesn't matter the protocol, we're gonna tunnel, uh, not tunnel you. We're gonna pick one stream for you. And the number of stream is, it's not really unlimited. It's, I think it's 200 per TCP connection. You can increase that. But now we have one connection instead, and you can reuse, so multiplex, so less memory. I'm going to add double code because HTTP2 technically adds a little bit of an overhead <laughs> the more streams you have because it's in the user space. And if it's in the user space, that's, that's work on your application to kind of... Uh, nitpick and find oh this packet oh this packet is stream one this packet is stream two there's all this all this parsing that has to do at the, at the application level but unless http 2 comes to the kernel we're stuck with this stuff right so there's cpu overhead and smart people smarter than me are figuring out uh, to how to make it faster the, the same exact problem with the quick protocol all right and finally uh, talking about speaking about uh, 
the connect protocol and web sockets uh, there is this RFC that has been going on since 2018. This is called 8441, and I made a video about it. Check it out right here. And uh, it, is, it is the idea of extending the Connect protocol, which I talked about it, right? The Connect HTTP method, which essentially the Connect method says, hey, I am a client. I'm talking to you. I know you are a proxy, but I want to go to that guy, and I want you to open a tunnel for me. And it, a tunnel is basically another TCP connection. Just open a tunnel and I'm gonna send garbage there. You don't you don't see it. You just literally follow the packets to the back end. Don't try to look, don't terminate my connection, don't terminate my TLS, don't do anything. Just forward that stuff to the back end. That's connect, right? Connect is limited because it is literally dumb. It just say, hey, open a TCP connection to the back end and then tell me so I can just send you a packet. Future packets going to this port slash IP will always go to that source uh, port destination, port destination IP. Okay. However, imagine doing w connect with WebSockets. The example coming back to what we discussed earlier with WebSockets and, 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 and uh, load balancers and the waste that is going back. Every time we do a connect, <sighs> a, a, a duck dies, essentially. You kill a duck. You don't need to kill ducks, man. You have to save the ducks. Every time you do a connect, you kill a duck. So a TCP connection is reserved just for you. It's a waste. It's such a waste because most of the time you're not going to fully utilize that beautiful TCP connection. And it's going to sit there just for you. Just because it's a tunnel and nobody, we cannot touch the tunnels because if you touch the tunnel, it's, it's a stateful thing. If you touch the tunnel, you break everything. You, you're going to collapse. No canary in the coal mine can save you there. It's just done. You're done, right? So you don't touch the TCP connection on the back end when it is in the antenna mode so there is this 8441 rfc that tries to solve this with an extended connect it says okay i want to go to that but here's my protocol i'm going to give you some knowledge tyler pays i'm going to give you some knowledge about my protocol so you know what to do a proxy because if it's if it's a web socket we can we know it's http at the end of the day right so we can Dedicate one stream in the backend for HTTP connections, HTTP 2, for you. So we tunnel on a stream on a given TCP connection. So beautiful. Beautiful. So good. But if I'm going to connect you, if I'm going to establish a tunnel for MySQL or MongoDB or Postgres, there's no multiplexing that. I guess theoretically you can. But more knowledge you you have there you can decide as a back end not a back end as a proxy that you build you can decide you have more knowledge in there and obviously this stuff is not easy uh from what i read online it's being it looks like there's a lot of fighting going on the browsers and and the proxies proxies are, are refusing to implement this extended connect nginx just says nah looks like since no bro it's like a chicken and egg problem is this browsers are not implementing it why are we gonna oh, i'm not gonna spend time implementing this extended connection if no browsers no clients gonna connect to me and the browsers are not doing other stuff and uh, essentially uh, all these proxies are are essentially just waiting so like, okay well, let's wait for see what, what will happen Meanwhile, there is another protocol that is in draft. It's, still, it's not even final. It's called MASK. M-A-S-Q-E-U-E, -E, something like that. It's, I, f I forgot what it stands for. Let me, let me get it for a second. What's this? this is the quick thingy. This is the quick equivalent of uh, connect. All right. It stands for the MASK protocol. It stands for Multiplex Application Substrat Over Quick Encryption. It, ha it addresses limitation of the connect because connect only work on TCP. It can only establish TCP uh, sockets, right? Uh, tunnels TCP. So mask actually extend that to UDP as well because Quake, right? And all that stuff, guys. Yeah. And uh, I get a lot of questions like, okay, what is better? What is, uh, what is, what is more efficient? Is it HTTP 2 on the back end? Is it HTTP 1 on the back end? I cannot answer that because it really depends on your client. Do you have browsers as client or do you have a well-behaving 
uh, simple clients that just establish one TCP connection and send, I, I don't know, like a, you have IoT devices that is just sending every second one request, right? It's just logging. You don't need HTTP2 for that because HTTP2 is, is useful when your client is want to request multiple things. It's single client want to request multiple things at the same time. Like a browser. The browser, hey, I want this CSS page, this JavaScript, this uh, bootstrap, this uh, image, and this, this, bleh, give it to me. Right? That's, that's what, uh, that's why HTTP2 was designed for that use case. Right? I find it, you can see the same pattern in the reverse proxy, where the reverse proxy actually tries to make multiple requests, right, to the same server. And that's when HTTP2 or streaming in general is useful, like quick is useful in this case. But if you don't have that, I don't know, you know what I mean? I think it's a waste to implement HTTP2. Keep it simple. HTTP1 is so, because uh, HTTP2 comes with a cost. I mean, yeah. If, it's, if, if you have an endpoint that is browsable, like in a browser, then definitely it's still the way. But if you have like, I don't know, an API that is being consumed from a C-sharp application that doesn't know how to multiplex altogether, or it's just only H1, use H1, it's so much simpler, right? H1 is like very close to the kernel, almost very close to the kernel because a TCP segment i know network people will yell at me segment not packet ip packet tcp segment is almost identical to the http one so because that that's the layer seven content is just the data http2 no the data of the tcp segment after you collect all the segments into one beautiful data no that's not the final thing you still have to do some work on the application by just stra extracting the streams out of this garbage you know so there's a lot, a lot of work you have to do. And that work is not cheap. Your, your, your computer has to do this work, right? Has to do, okay, this is stream one, this is stream zero, this is the magic stream, this is blah, 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 blah. This is all the work that you have to do. All right, guys, so that was, um, that was like a little bit of a rambling, talking about all that stuff. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, this is obviously going to end up on my podcast. So uh, I like to do this stuff uh, to put in the podcast. And uh, if you don't know, guys, I have a podcast what I put stuff that is relevant uh, to put in the podcast, obviously not tutorials, the podcast, so you can listen while you're working out or eating or watching your favorite show. Can, I, can you watch a show and listen to workers now? <laughs> or playing video games. You can, you can listen to that stuff. It's HusseinNasser.com slash podcast. Or just search for the Back in Engineering Show with Hussein Nasser and your favorite podcast player. I'm going to see you in the next one. Thank you so much for your support. I love you. I'm going to see you in the next one. What do you think about the whole thing? Where do you think we're headed with the back end? And uh, I'm so excited about the whole thing. I just, it's so fascinating looking at all this stuff. And that just, it's, it's, uh, because you see a lot of smart people trying to make a decision and then it just shut, got shut down and then people try to solve and then people come up with a better solution. Uh, sometimes it's over engineering. Sometimes no, it's, it's really good, but yeah, let me know in the comment section below. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.